again, I welcome you all to the 70th uh, Rajagiri Roundtable Conference. And uh, I'm happy to extend uh, this uh, uh, invitation to all of you uh, to uh, a warm welcome to all of you once again. And uh, this, is, this event is held every month uh, to discuss the challenges uh, and opportunities and uh, new problems that come up in the education sector now and then, because education is a sector which keeps changing uh, because it needs to be dynamic and evolve according to the changes that is changing, taking place in the society. So this is usually attended by leading academicians, even uh, policy makers, uh, teachers, students, and management experts. So a uh, wide variety, depending on the topic, we have a wide variety of experts joining us from across the country and even outside uh, India. So uh, today is our topic, the 70th uh, uh, event, the topic is uh, fitness challenge for the nation. So we are all aware that three years ago, perhaps for the first time in the history of independent India, a prime minister accepted a fixed fitness challenge from a sportsman, Virat Kohli, and posted a video. His slogan was, was Ham to fit, nation India to fit. This created a new culture of health, vitality, and energy in our lives. I don't think any other prime minister might have uh, created this kind of, uh, uh, what do you call it, interest and enthusiasm uh, by uh, himself uh, coming, appearing on Twitter and all the social media uh, with such a, uh, accepting a challenge and uh, showing how he keeps fit. So he even challenged very important people, including Karnataka uh, Chief Minister at that point of time, uh, Kumar Swami, and then uh, table tennis star Manika Batra and all IPS officers above the age of uh, 40. So the campaign was originally started by Union, then Union Sports Minister Rajwardhan Singh Rathor. Now the Kelo India and uh, Fit India campaign has taken off in a big way in the past two years. Once playing cricket was the dream of many of the youngsters in India because cricket was the one which uh, received the most patronage. But now we can see that in the new uh, 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 policy recommendation of the government, uh, 20 new disciplines have been brought into the sports quota for uh, jobs. Uh, this includes baseball, fencing, netball, even tug of war, tennis, ball cricket, rugby, soft tennis, so many uh, new games which were never there in the uh, list at all. So, which means that such games are going to get patronage from the uh, public sector and also pri big private uh, sector players. So this is a uh, heartening news. And the new education policy 2020 lays so much importance on uh, uh, what you call physical education, then fitness and uh, inculcating a spirit of uh, sport in the uh, children and youth. So this, once the COVID crisis is over, we uh, expect children to get back to the playgrounds. And this was a tough year for all of us. And uh, uh, even the, uh, we have other issues also to tackle. That is the incidence of uh, uh, obesity among children, uh, the incidence of high incidence of uh, non-communicable diseases. Uh, which has to be met through uh, appropriate food and nutrition and also through physical activities. And this is indeed a cause for concern. So we'll be addressing four major issues in this. Uh, uh, by uh, And we have experts from Sports Authority of India, coaches, cricket coaches, football uh, academies, uh, yoga and uh, uh, aerobic experts. So we have a cross-section of people from sports and fitness to address us. So we'll be uh, uh, focusing on four main areas, how to inculcate a sense of fitness uh, for every child in the nation, and then how we can impart the basic skills uh, so that we can groom national and international players in various sports and games, including athletics and cricket and all the uh, other tennis, for example. And how can uh, the fitness protocols be developed? Uh, I mean. Uh, Come, become more effective uh, under the Fit India program. Uh, and also, India needs to develop a fitness index uh, because we need to know how each institution is faring with respect to the fitness goals that are set for the nation. 
then we'll go to Jude St. Peter and uh, let's hear from him what is the uh, uh, scenario in the schools and colleges right now and how best we can uh, take the challenges forward. Jude St. Peter is actually uh, an MED in physical education and uh, he's uh, a physical education teacher from Kochi. Um, good evening, everyone. Yes, uh, fitness challenge for nation. This is our topic um, we were talking about. Um, we know that um, physical fitness is activated uh, in a child from the mother's womb itself. But once they get into the school because of academic burden, physical education class is reduced to one or two periods in a week. And when they reach the higher classes, it again reduces. So especially girls, after their ninth standard, they never see the ground. But when so if you don't do exercise exercises it may become uh, a very uh, fatal condition when the doctors uh, say that it, it is a fatal then only these uh, child uh, these children the, or these people will start uh, doing their uh, workout or exercise so this is a uh, this is what we have uh, we have seen uh, throughout uh, in in our nation. What I've seen in schools. So uh, what is the remedy for this uh, solution? What I, uh, what my experience is is creating early interest in a child. So only uh, 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 motor skills should be developed in an early stage. At that uh, from the first uh, standard itself, the school uh, should compulsory make the child to do physical activity. So these physical activities should be uh, should be uh, taught by a, a qualified teacher. This is not done in our nation. What I've seen, because in primary level, in uh, especially in uh, state uh, schools, uh, is there is no physical education teachers. So when they reach uh, to the fifth standard only, the physical education teachers is appointed, and that too, uh, very less. Uh, according only 500 teachers is uh, there in a UP, then only a physical education teacher is appointed. And in a high school, uh, there should be five division for a teacher to be appointed. So what I mean is a physical education teacher should be there to uh, guide a, a, a student. Only then a student will inculcate that motor skill from the early stage so that he will be have the interest to uh, play because when the skills is learned from the early stage the student that uh, that child will uh, love to do that activity whichever sport it may be so this is not uh, uh, done in our uh, state or in, uh, in the schools what i've seen so this should be the first uh, this is the first uh, area what we have to create early interest in the child so for that the teacher uh, is should be compulsory appointed and that to a qualified teacher. Uh, I've seen in K3 Vidyalay in uh, schools, guest teachers, uh, those who have uh, participated in state, uh, they can uh, be a coach. So that uh, that is not a right uh, uh, way. So because they have not learned how to teach in a uh, systematic and scientific method. So this is what is lacking in our, uh, in our schools. Now, another uh, uh, thing is what I've seen is parenting. Parents have uh, very, uh, uh, very less parents uh, uh, having that concept of uh, making the child to be fit and healthy. So uh, most of the parents, uh, when when we see look into the uh, lower uh, in the government schools, what they they are uh, uh, not aware of uh, uh, health and fitness. They only see into the academic but they don't know uh, that uh, physical education, health and physical education is a compulsory and it is a, uh, it's a main uh, subject which that develop their uh, whole all round development of the human. That, that is not uh, known by these parents. So they don't have that awareness and they never uh, uh, recommend or they do, will not push their child to be a sportsman or uh, uh, make their uh, physically fit. So if physically fitness is 
uh, uh, thing it is not to make a sports uh, man or a uh, olympian it is to uh, to be uh, imparted to each and every child even if they are not uh, if they are uh, uh, physically challenged so this is not uh, seen uh, in our even though ncrt and scrt is uh, 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 is recommending uh, as a physical education teachers but it is not compulsory in schools that is what i have seen i have told you the ratio of a teacher in most of the state schools i am not having sufficient physical education teachers in now uh, only only 2000 teachers in our state so this is a, uh, in a state government school and uh, in uh, in some of the schools in uh, cbsc i have seen uh, in maharashtra there is no even not, not a single teacher uh, physical education teacher some other teacher general teachers are taking them to play that will not create an interest to a child that is what i have seen because the child should be taught the basic skills from the early uh, childhood syllabus so they learn uh, systematically and they they love to play and they will continue their activity throughout their life so this is the fitness part so from that from that we can identify talents from that we can get so many talents from those among these uh, fitness people so we will get the best uh, for the uh, preparation for the olympian uh, and we will get a lot of hundreds of uh, olympians in our nation so this is what and ncrt another thing is ncrt uh, and scrt i have told early it should make the uh, make compulsory physical education uh, subject to every uh, child in a, every child uh, in a, in a, uh, in five days a week not a two days in a week that is what uh, syllabus is telling because every day physical fitness should be given to a child you know, five days Uh, minimum so that is not uh, 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 practiced in our schools another uh, thing is that uh, after see uh, i have told you uh, from 1 to 5 there is no physical education teachers in in the primary level so for, from 5 to 10 there is physical education teachers very and is not appointed in, uh, because if 500 less than 500 499 students Uh, is there there is no uh, appointed taken place in the school and after that after 10 after 10 that is the that is the main uh, area where uh, what i have seen uh, the uh, the immense uh, fitness level uh, uh, or energy level is, is there in the uh, age level of 15 to 17 and that plus 2 level there is no physical education activities it's very very uh, sad thing in our we we say that uh, we are uh, we are trying to become international schools but it is a sad part that there is no physical education teachers in plus 2 level in kerala but in all other state it is compulsory but th- that is a very a very sad part in 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 uh, our state and and after that after 12th there is no because of that there is a, there is a gap between uh, that uh, after 10th there is a gap two years after that they will not pick up their physical act- activity up in the degree level and uh, okay. uh, so this is these are the uh, uh, things what i have seen so uh, okay. for so thank you Johnson, for this, uh, yeah Johnson i'm I'm, for the i'm winding up yeah. uh, i'm winding up uh, thank you for uh, this uh, i'm sure that uh, thank you for inviting me and uh, uh, this 70th rajagiri round table uh, conference uh, will be a eye opener to all the uh, people who are uh, you know uh, take initiative uh, this and it will be eye opener to uh, Uh, office litigation and health and thank you very much for giving an opportunity thank you yeah. Yeah, thank you jutsan peter you have actually given a very good perspective of what actually is happening at the ground reality that is uh, we always talk about how best we can implement all these in schools and we have so many new initiatives announced in the new education policy but uh, the ground reality is you have said because uh, in the primary level we don't have qualified teachers to uh, ta- uh, uh, generate that kind of interest and train them properly and once children get to a level where they have high energy they are fully involved in studies so that they don't get the time for this kind of uh, sports and other activities so i think this is the right time for the premananda singh to intervene and uh, uh, tell us how we can create a good uh, a pool of uh, physical education teachers trained teachers uh, who go beyond the university level from where you are working to the schools and colleges and actually Uh, make the uh, kelo india or fit india 
um, campaign a, a success or reality so we'll quickly uh, hear from uh, premananda how best that can be done a yeah, very good evening i'm all present here uh, and like i am the dr premananda working as a assistant assistant professor in the national sports university manipur and uh, first of all like it's an honor and privilege for me like to share the table and screen with all the renowned personalities and speakers many speakers like of today's 78 rasgiri uh, round table and uh, first of all congratulate congratulate and thank you to the organizer for having me today uh, <clears throat> thank you for inviting me uh, <clears throat> yes uh, like uh, i cannot like able to listen uh, which which the speaker has just recently spoke regarding the physical education and all but yeah like uh, since it is my concern and profession like which i am working right now and we are trying to like promote the physical education in the country as well as in the state as well uh, so that so that the topic is all about the fitness and what what uh, how we can promote the fitness and how we can promote a physical education teacher and the, uh, how we can develop our physical education profession in the country right uh, so like uh, i thought of uh, like uh, speaking regarding this physical fitness regarding the fitness and all uh, uh, since like uh, you have been uh, given me the like the topic regarding this fitness how to promote uh, the fitness and how to promote this uh, promote uh, the youth and also uh, actually i thought of uh, speaking on that uh, point uh, but uh, sir uh, like uh, uh, Sri Kumar sir, you are telling me to like spoke on this physical education, uh, this one or yes. like... Yes, yes, uh, uh, physically how best we can, uh, because at the school level, how best we can, because we lack teachers. As uh, Judson has pointed out, uh, we lack the qualified teachers at the school level to uh, actually implement it from an early learning level. And also at the senior okay, level sir. also, we uh, lack the resources. Okay, sir, that is very fact. Yes, sir, that's very fact that uh, the initiative is already be already taken by the Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports regarding to promote the physical education in the country. But still, like there are some state, there are some even in my state also, there are lots of schools. Like recently, I have visited some of the schools for the internship program. But very unfortunately, like many of the schools, which that also the CVC school, like they used to say that we don't have the physical education subject here in even in their uh, CBSE curriculum also. But it's been already initiated, but it is very unfortunate for the state also, like uh, like it's been not yet initiated and well, and it need to be like enhanced and actually like in all the state and all the state, like we need to work together. If you want to promote physical education, then in every state and any uh, in every uh, university and college, it's, there should be a physical education department. So that like because there's a misconception regarding the physical education that everyone used to like uh, what do you say understand that physical education is all about the teaching and playing in the sport and playing the sports in the ground. But it's not actually that. But physical education here in the uh, that is the like action profession where we can promote. The fitness where we can promote uh, the, the education as well as like uh, making a profession in a good way. So, sir, like uh, uh, in that prospect, like when I'm talking about the promotion of physical education, yes, like there are many physical education colleges like Lakshmi Bhai National Institute of Physical Education, Gwalior, Lakshmi Bhai National Institute of Physical Education, Guwahati, LNCP, Trivandrum, YMCA, the, all those. Like all these uh, colleges which has been taken and uh, already established uh, from many years back. So th they were trying very hard to promote physical education, right? So like my point is, uh, like uh, if you if we want to promote the physical education from uh, this one, then we have to work together and there should be a one governing body. Under the governing body, we have to work together because in our physical education, I have been observing that there are lots of confusion regarding to that. Regarding to that means there's no such mother institution who will be controlling our, our all this uh, uh, all our profession because many people are following the NCT rules, many people are following the UGC rules. That also a big confusion even for the students who want to opt it the physical education as a profession also like they are big confusion regarding that whether I have to go for the BPN or whether I have to have to choose BPS. Or some in, in some of the university and colleges, they uh, like they are actually like 
uh, running the courses of BS in physical education. And so what I mean to say is, we actually want, we need to have one governing body, and very soon it's been already like discussed in our meeting with the uh, our honourable minister also regarding to that matter, and he is already initiated uh, regarding to that, and he's very soon he's going to form one uh, sports body that also like it will help to promote the physical education as well as sports coaching. So like in that uh, aspect, in that uh, governing body, there will be uh, that particular governing body will be purely focused on promoting the physical education in the country as well as the sports coaching coaching in the country, which is very important, which is very new now. So sir, like <clears throat> uh, I'm talking about that, sir. All the schools, like all the, like this is my sincere request and humble request to all the school teacher and and uh, this principle like to both and to include the physical education subject in the school so that it can it will help to promote the fitness aspect it will help to promote the sports then only it is possible to promote the physical education as well as the sports in the country so otherwise like it will be a, like as uh, like just just a discussion so like we need to have a good initiative regarding to that matter and we have to take seriously that so in every schools and colleges, we should have a good uh, department of physical education as well as even in the schools also, even in our grassroots level also, we need to like adult, we need to promote the physical education and then let them like the children, let them know that the value of physical education, that physical education is not only the playing sports, right? So like there's various aspects where we, we used to cover like fitness aspect, the, the education aspect, the overall development of the children, the physical development, mental development, social development, lots of aspects we are trying to cover up. So that's value of the physical education. We need to give the awareness to all the schools and in all the university and colleges. So like, like the, the prime uh, the star of this uh, sports star and all like they have to include in for promoting the physical education numbers. And even like this is my humble suggestion and request to the uh, high authority also to make the physical education compulsory and to include in their curriculum as a part of the uh, uh, extreme subject, not as a part of uh, alternative or uh, option subject. It should be uh, like considered as an important one and where the student can opt their profession, where a student can choose their profession in the field of physical education. So that is very important, and uh, uh, I think so that's what I can say. And like there are many aspects to say, but uh, since like I already prepared regarding to this fitness of uh, aspect and all, like and all. But yes, sir. Uh, from last like four or five years back, uh, this our honourable prime minister has already initiated a program called the Fit India Movement and all. And our respected our uh, sports minister also like since he is very active from last two three years and he has been taking such a good initiative regarding to promote the sports in the country and like lots of scheme has been announced and initiated like Fit India Movement and uh, many more many more uh, scheme has been initiated uh, initiated. But that is also a, like important aspect where, for the physical education teacher as well as the sports club and. <clears throat> There are various schemes like the National Sports Talent uh, Contest Schemes, uh, Army Boys Sports uh, Company Scheme, Sai Training Center Scheme, like many more Hello India, Fit India Movement, Come and Play Scheme. There are lots of schemes which has been initiated by the ministry as well. But it should be taken like, seriously in the state, in every state. Like if we all are doing working together like with the one motto and objective, that will be good for our profession as well. And like it will be very easy for all the uh, teacher and physical education teacher to promote the physical education in the country. And here, sir, in a sense, post university, we are focusing here to promote the physical education as well as all the sports coaching de uh, department, as well as all the sports sciences department. So here, sir, we, right now we are running the Bachelor of Physical Education in our university uh, under, the, under the guidance of UCC. So, so here, sir, we have been taking the various initiative uh, regarding to like so thanks, promote the physical uh, education in yeah. the Yeah, thanks, Dr. Raiman Singh. We'll yeah. come back to you because uh, two issues you raised. One is the we're having a common uh, one single governing body. So I think there's some 
clarity required in that because uh, sports is, I think, is a state subject. So states have a very active role despite whatever measures that the central government might be taking. So I think we need clarity on that. And also you talked about how physical education, how what are the components that are required at the school and college level. I think you need, you can uh, at the later stage uh, give a little more insight into that. So we'll quickly go to Trisha Vinod. She's actually um, a tennis star uh, having uh, won international and national tournaments at this under-16, under-19 level uh, and achieved some high ranking in the top 10 and top 20. So we'll quickly find out what are the challenges a player faces. Like uh, tennis is a very difficult game to establish oneself. And what are the challenges one uh, young child uh, with interest in uh, sport like tennis uh, face and how difficult it is to come up uh, in the Indian uh, environment. So what kind of uh, changes are required in your view? Okay, um, uh, good evening to everyone. So uh, I'm Trisha. I was playing tennis, but I had to move back to my Bangalore because of the issues that I was facing in Kerala as a state, because the government as a whole doesn't support as much as what we thought because I was playing for Bangalore and I moved to Kerala thinking Kerala would support me, would do a lot of things. But what happened is the government stopped the funds. So we didn't have enough funds to become something in our life. We ended up, you know, not getting enough sponsorships and there were a lot of CSR funds. There were a lot of, you know, people who were ready to support us. But again, it has to go through this side. So again, um, because every time the fund has to go through the sports authority, we were not getting the fund and we ended up reaching nowhere. Not like how the other states, uh, state players reached. And I think the next thing uh, that we faced is the coaching part. Um, I feel we don't have really qualified coaches. We have coaches, but not really qualified. They, they don't have the mindset to actually grasp a lot of things. They think they learned a lot, but they still didn't want to, uh, you know, go for workshops and understand what are the new things that was going on, what was in the trend. So we were used to the same style and they, they could teach only till a level. So when the same thing happened to me, I learned till a level. I touched top 10 in India and I became, um, you know, what do you say, ITF. I was 1000. But then just after that, I was not improving. So I had to move to Thailand and different countries to you know, improve ourselves. So uh, everyone thinks that white skin is a problem, but they definitely are a lot more adaptive, I feel, because the government is not really, you know, supportive. So that is a second thing that I felt. Okay. And yeah. uh, the third thing that I feel is Kerala doesn't have players. Like, the parents are really behind academics. So that is a major cause for we not having a team. The th Again, the thing I face, I was the only Kerala player who was playing ITF in the women's circuit. So I was getting, you know, left alone everywhere. I didn't have a team to practice with, nothing. So that is one big thing that the parents don't support the kids. I don't know, because they think literacy is more important than, you know, sports and that is a big backdrop in Kerala so there's a lot of challenges like that because um, everyone thinks academics is very important I don't say academics is not important I dropped out in seventh and I did my open schooling so I wrote my tenth in open through open schooling so I think the parents should be more educated about it thinking you know it's NIOS is not only for failures it is for people who have improved themselves so I think the parents uh, should be educated. Like my parents supported me <laughs> by God's grace, but there's a lot of parents that in Trivandrum itself wasn't supporting their kids and they ended up nowhere, even though they had talent more than me, in fact. But if, you know, they don't have proper fund, they don't have proper coaching, they have, you know, they don't have proper, you know, guidance, we don't reach anywhere. So those are the, again, another challenge that I face in Trivandrum is there's a lot of politics. Uh, I don't know if... <laughs> It's club politics or it is, um, I, I don't know what to call it, but 
they don't let you improve beyond the level because that's like questioning their own skills um that they like i played in trivandrum club i had to go legally against them because of a lot of matters um and i feel a lot of people in the in kerala itself they do not like girls coming up i to a fact that i believe that because they didn't uh, whenever i wanted the tennis court they never gave me and there's a lot of challenges for a girl otherwise itself we have a lot of challenges but the people in kerala in the state the government makes it even difficult for girls to come up in their life which is quite you know very hard for us to uh, that's why i had to again move back to another country altogether to become something in my life and so it again so you are not comfortable in bangalore also uh, I mean, you are not happy uh, in the no i i moved uh, from uh, bangalore to kerala because my grandfather was the minister so they he promised a lot of things and i came but that's when the oki um, thing came up and then my fund was stopped at that time and we didn't realize it was because of the government that they didn't sign the paper for me to get the fund so the government played a major role in not signing the paper and giving us the funds and that turned into some other place you know it went to the trivandrum tennis club altogether instead of giving it to the players a lot of players suffered that and we have to shell out for everything even for food even if we're playing for the state we end up paying everything flight tickets to food to you know day to day expenses and it's like all together the burden they put it on us and they expect you know results which <laughs> quite doesn't happen okay so great uh, actually uh, you have raised a lot of issues uh, but uh, i read some news reports saying that uh, uh, for some players uh, even the coach uh, the cost of sending the coach and their flight expenses were met uh, not all players but recently so i think uh, that is an issue which uh, we will have to address uh, for yeah. tennis and other games so yeah. i think this is uh, we'll come back to you again uh, because you. you have raised uh, so many issues regarding funding and not getting uh, proper coaching so we'll quickly go to uh, tinu yohannan because uh, some of the issues that uh, trisha uh, told i think that is applicable to cricket also although cricket has got lot of patronage um, in the country and uh, so many youngsters want to play cricket uh, because uh ultimately there is so much money uh coming and going into uh, this match i um, mean cricket matches and we have so uh, apart from cricket uh, test, test cricket we have so many other events taking place now the ipl is on uh, so what do you think um, is required now you have understood the problem at the school level we don't have sufficient time for children who are interested in uh, sports to have physical fitness because physical education is uh, not a priority in our school system then when we go to a, the age where the teenage where uh, there is so much energy and enthusiasm that that time the focus uh, goes to uh, what do you call studies academics and then of course career so uh, apart from that as trisha said many face the issue of uh, not getting proper coaching or even funds uh so it all uh, gets in the uh, murky affair totally so what um, is your view since you uh, emerged from this state and uh, became a, a national player i mean you were in the indian cricket team uh, for you know, one day and uh, now you are coaching so you are i think at a better perspective to tell us uh, what exactly is the problem now and how best it can be uh, addressed thank you thank you so much good evening everybody it's great to join you all in this forum so and thank you for having me i think uh, we've been hearing a lot of uh, problems here and i'm sure problems definitely exist uh, you know uh, india is not a easy country to play sport i agree unless you are at the right place at the right time uh, you can't you know make it big in sport here and everyone is not fortunate enough to do that even if you have the money you have the resources but you know it's a matter of lot of chances you, there's a lot of chances involved uh, in in this country uh, if you compare it to other countries there is a lot of uncontrollables if you want to put that word uncontrollables as a player uh, as an athlete that is beyond your control okay cricket also has the same thing you know uh, just as trisha told cricket also a lot of athletes face the same problem you know let it be selection let it be being at the right uh, with the right coaches let it be infrastructure 
and whatever you see in tv is only the you know is the tip of the the good things that we see but that's a lot of unfortunate things that happens in the lower levels and it's same with uh, all sport but cricket one thing is you know bcci uh, being a professional body it is it has created a system it's created a proper system which which runs on itself okay and uh, cricket the format is uh, such that you know after every over there's a break and there's a lot of time so a lot of ads come in so money keeps flowing into the game and it's become more of a you know the commercial angle is made so strong that cricket uh, attracts a lot of corporates and sponsors into so uh, you know we are fortunate enough to uh, be in this game but i'm sure you know other games also i'm not comparing but other games uh, if it has a proper system set and if especially the fun part is utilized uh, better i think uh, surely we can see already we are seeing uh, great results uh, than maybe 10 years back in other sport you know and uh, i read in, in today's newspaper that india is expecting at least 10 to 12 medals in the next olympics which is a great uh place to be you know comparing to the previous years so i think we are going forward definitely but uh, the question is how uh, how we can work a solution and you know uh, what we can do best as as sports lovers as professionals in this um, in this field what we can do best uh, to uh, you know uh, see sports uh, get better in this country i think one thing is you know about educating at school level as uh, jutson you know said education at school level is so important because changing the mindset towards sport now why we ha- we why need we need to uh, take up sport is the you know biggest mindset that we have to change that's what i feel uh, sometimes you know uh, people see sports only as a profession you know uh, it uh, like why you need to play sport if you don't have the talent or if you have, don't have the ability you know why unnecessarily spend uh, spend your time wasting there you can go and study something or do what you're good at but you know for me anyone who has played any kind of sport is not a loser okay he's not lo- lost anything in his life but he's only gained if he has if he has played sport and you know let it be the the smallest uh the good feeling that he gets uh, maybe scoring a goal, goal or putting a basket or t- taking a wicket or you know, scoring some runs whatever whatever be it, that that good feeling that you carry to your home back home after playing sport and definitely that's ill feelings also you carry but there's a it's a mixed bag and you learn from it you learn from the ups and downs in your life and it and it resembles your life so much you know so sports teaches you life and so that's why i told you anyone who's taken up sport is never a loser and it's uh, he's a gainer there so as parents as uh, coaches uh, you know as friends uh, we need to you know first educate the children with us what's the importance of sport why need we need to play sport you know i think sport can uh, when we uh, say sport we think it's more, more physical mm-hmm. uh you know or fitness if we take fitness we always you know compare it to uh, more physical aspects uh, of of our life you know maybe uh, in this forum doesn't uh, you know you all know better it's just not physical but if you take a public opinion they may say that yeah it's more of a body uh, thing but you know let me say as an athlete as i as an athlete you can never win a game without a strong mind i'm sure everyone is with me in that you can never win a game unless you have a strong mind you know uh, let it keep, or uh, you can never consistently win a game if you if you don't have a strong mind okay you may maybe win one or two times out of 10 okay that may be a chance if you are weak in your mind but unless you have a strong clear and you know uh, un uh, fluctuating mind you can win games you need clarity in your mind okay so there's a lot of mind uh, to be in uh, sport 
all right so the mind aspect is covered and after that is your character i think that's something very important when we uh, when we need uh, to be an athlete the character what what's inside us the sportsman spirit if you can call it or whatever we put it uh, as you know the character is so important as an athlete maybe you can win without character you know you can win without character but if you need to be a good we need to be known as a good athlete you know it's very important to have character inside what you're really made of you know is uh, is quest uh, is uh, questioned when you are in tough situations in the field okay what you're really made of okay when pressure is there on on the field okay so your character is also developed as an athlete okay so all these things combined makes a good athlete or good sportsman it's just not physical so this education has to be given uh, uh, to our children okay so value based sports coaching is so important uh, that's what i feel uh, in our school especially the coming generation uh, especially the uh, the generation that we are uh, that is growing up now because machines i believe in this machines is taking over every possible things that we can see or we we do let it be anything machines is taken over and you know the human uh, help is slowly slowly being reduced okay okay but something that cannot be replaced this is what i uh, see uh, believe and you know look forward something that cannot be replaced is arts and sports arts and sports why it cannot be replaced by machine is because you know the human characteristics that need to uh, do these things or play sport or uh, you know make an art piece or you know sing a song or you know uh, act somewhere you need there's a lot of emotional things added to it so i think this cannot be replaced by machines at least to to some extent so i think sports arts and sports has a big role to play uh, in the coming future and it's a big and it's a vastly growing industry as you all know okay the sports industry so and also sports is getting online in a big way uh, the corona is uh, something that you know it's opened our eyes as coaches also sports can be coached and to an extent online to an extent okay uh, so it's getting online also and it's a great, great media medium to reach to uh, young young uh, students young athletes uh, the online platform so i think the sports is changing it's slowly evol- evolving and we all have to be uh, get evolved with it and you know i believe that we all have a uh, you know our country has a great future when it comes to sports and it has a big role to play in building our country okay i'm stopping by saying that and thank you so much for this uh, yes, uh, opportunity you once know, again you made uh, yeah. really some very important points one is that um, uh, we should uh, whether we want to take uh, sport as a profession like you did uh, there should be enjoyment in uh, taking part in a sport and when you go, go back home you should go with uh, happiness and second thing is the mind part uh, i think that is always overlooked you always look at the physical uh, part of the uh, sport not the uh, mind uh so and also the character formation i think you have made very very valuable points so i think uh, this is the time when um, uh, what do you call uh, yoga uh, the science of yoga plays a very important part because uh, once uh, you um, when you are out in the field you require that strong mind you have need to have the presence of mind you have to think uh, fast on uh, on the feet so
Yeah, so uh, we have uh, Reshma, okay, Reshma Shaji, who is joining us from Doha, uh, Qatar, and uh, she has got a MA in uh, what do you call it? Uh, yoga, applied yoga, and also uh, she has a diploma in psychotherapy, and she is presently a, a fitness trainer in uh, Doha, Qatar. And another important point I would like to add is that Yogasana has been included as a competitive sport in India. So National Yoga Sports Federation has been set up and we'll have uh, Yogasana male and female categories in Kelo India Youth and Games. So we'll uh, ask um, uh, Reshma, uh, how important is yoga uh, uh, for our mental uh, fitness and also uh, physical fitness? And just as uh, Tinu Yohannan has said, we need a strong mind to even win games. So how do you fit in the yoga into all this and uh, physical education? How can it become an integral part of our uh, uh, school education and college education system? Okay. Uh, good evening, all. First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Srikumar for inviting me to this fitness challenge or to the nation. Uh, like, so uh, if I would say yoga is really a, a big thing that it's like in your entire life, you need that sportsman spirit, right? Hanan was saying something uh, related to that. And uh, he was telling about it's just not the physical aspect, even yoga. When, you, when I started doing yoga, even I had this feeling that it's just doing some physical exercise or that's it. But when I went deeper into it, like when I started really doing it, I understood that it's more on the physical, it's not just on the physical thing, it's more on the mental and emotional stability, bringing stability to yourself. Uh, so it's like, for me, as I'm a trainer, it's not just about making some money. It's more into like the mental and emotional and physical stability. It's like complete, uh, it's completing yourself. Uh, like now, because of uh, Narendra Modi, yoga has come up a lot. Before, like uh, when I start, when I did my masters, like people were even asking me, like why, why am I even doing masters in yoga? So uh, they were like, what you will do with doing masters in yoga? Would you even earn money? It's not just about the money. That's not the uh, point here. So it's more into the uh, emotional and mental aspect. And it's completely on satisfaction, uh, where you're getting the uh, complete satisfaction. And I think even the the mentality of people has to change because people think that it's just the physical aspect. And you can really, uh, by doing yoga, you can really change your the entire life. It's like a lifestyle actually. It's not just doing exercise, it's more into the lifestyle. You change your entire life or the entire lifestyle changes. Uh, that's the main part of yoga. And your mental and emotional, like the stability changes, you become more uh, stronger and your character is built when you start doing yoga. Okay, uh, Reshma, have you completed? Uh, is there a network problem there? I think she is having some network problem. Uh, so we'll quickly uh, go to uh, Nixon. Uh, Joseph, um, so Nixon Joseph is president of the and CEO or CEO of SBI Foundation. Uh, for a long, uh, I mean, more than I think two or three, dec four decades, um, he has been a banker and a sedentary banker, as he uh, calls himself. And uh, right now, uh, he has completed 50 uh, marathons, uh, full marathons. And that is indeed an achievement that, uh, I mean, uh, age is not a number, you have again proved. Uh, 
like uh, so many others uh, and so it is indeed uh, inspiring that you have joined us and i am also happy that your parent organization sbi has allocated a, a csr funding of rupees 5 crore this year for uh, the india Olymp india's government's target olympics podium scheme tops so it is indeed a very big gesture from uh, the public and one of the top public sector financial institutions in the country uh, so we would like to hear from you what actually makes uh, makes you uh, keep growing younger and uh, take up new challenges in sport so good evening everyone and uh, at the outset i thank father uh, Vagis, uh, Pandalu Karan, and uh, Srikumar for inviting me to this uh, very interesting uh, discussion. As listening to the many of the former speakers, and uh, they have all uh, laid threadbare the challenges they find in uh, the sports ecosystem, and uh, also the benefits of making a sports an important part of one's life. I was a student of Rajagiri school. And uh, earlier I was a student of Nirmala English medium school, Alua. If I look back to my school days, what I find is that in uh, our school, Nirmala English medium school, like uh, not even 10% uh, of focus was given to sports. So I was brought up till seventh standard with the belief that Education and academics is the only thing which can bring success in life. And there is not much importance to sports. I was brought up in the belief that sports is uh, generally taken by students who are not very good in studies. And parents also were like compelling us. Teachers also were telling us, you focus only on sports. And if at all we play, we were told that don't waste your time playing. You focus on studies. I came to Rajagiri school, I saw that importance is uh, placed on sports in those days. But only one uh, demerit which I found is that those who are interested in sports do it. But there are at least 70% of the students who don't do it. Like we see all over in the Rajagiri campus, uh, basketball, football, all these things are going on. But only those who are interested do it. But then it should be like a part of the like a schooling that the entire 100% participate in some form of physical activity, at least two to three days a week. And that doesn't, uh, so that was uh, something uh, which I experienced. And then later also, like when I was in uh, UC College, I also, I found that uh, like from everywhere, from the, the ecosystem tells us that focus on studies. If you focus on other things, you may not succeed in life much. And I think that was true to some extent those days. And uh, later, I find that like uh, it has evolved in sports has evolved in India. And that has to do much with, uh, one, the popularity of cricket. Parents uh, or uh, people came to know that there is money in uh, sports. And the winning of medals, Olympic medals by Apinav Bindra or Karna Malleshri and all, like Marote, like, uh, like uh, change the direction of uh, our attitude of people towards sports. So, but uh, in my case, what has happened is till the age of 45, I was not into any of these uh, fitness activities or physical activities. Mainly because see, I will uh, admit that I was brought up and many, I will tell you not me, many would be brought up in the belief that you focus only on studies. So in the office also, we do just go to office at 9 o'clock, come back uh, from office at 9 p.m. And that was the life. But then I th suddenly thought it is a much more sport, like uh, life is much more than office work or studies. We should uh, do something we challenge ourselves. What happened is over a period of time, everything becomes routine work, everything. So I thought I should challenge myself. And also I had a feeling that I should... Uh, be different from others. SBI is having 250,000 officials. I thought I should be different from others. How to be like, uh, how I should be different. I was thinking for many days. And then also I thought I should uh, be an inspiration to others. So how to be an inspiration, you have to do things differently. Like Tinu Yohanan or some other uh, athlete, athletes, uh, Trisha and all, like, they do things differently and they inspire others. So I thought I also should do something differently. 
and then I straight jumped into full marathon, 42 kilometers, without even knowing the distance. It was quite tough by first marathon, second marathon, but then with practice and all, I began to enjoy it. And the, my first finishes medal taught me that determination is everything. And then I began to enjoy sports. Only after entering into marathon and all, I came to know that sports, it's not a winning medals alone. Sports, we shouldn't equate with winning medals. It has to be like sports gives enjoyment to people. Sports improves your mental abilities. Sports in increases your confidence. Sports increases your self-esteem. It improves your resilience. So nowadays, we find many of the youth or younger generation getting disappointed, frustrated immediately. Many, there is increase in suicides because there is no spirit of resilience. Sports promotes resilience. And I would tell that I got all these qualities, like all these traits I could imbibe after taking to marathon running at the, from the age of 45, I can like uh, confidently tell that it improved my confidence, it improved my positivity, it improved my productivity at office also. Because if you are doing something good in sports, it is not restricted to sports. It becomes part of your life. So if you take uh, like uh, any activity, physical activity, anything, something you do good, it becomes part of your life. And you like carry it to your uh, office also. So office work also productivity increases. If we uh, consider school students, if they are into some physical activity, some sports activity, I can guarantee that their study level, their retention capacity, comprehension, all will go up. But what has happened is our awareness. Our, as parents, we have don't have much awareness about the benefits of sports. This is why sports India in India, sports is lagging behind because parents are not aware of the benefits of sports. And also like uh, the earlier uh, Trisha was telling, in spite of being a good uh, sports woman, she's not able to get the benefits of or able to focus on sports. See, if the sports woman herself has to See that she gets the scholarship, she gets the funding, she has to run after everything. When, where is the time to focus on sports? Recently, I had uh, undertaken a course by, like it was conducted by Abhinavindra Foundation, High Performance Leadership in Sports. That uh, sessions were taken by Olympians from uh, Europe, uh, Australia, America, and also Abhinavindra and Pullala Gobichand. But were, what they, like, uh, it opened me into the, like, we are crying that we don't have uh, many Olympic medals. But why it doesn't happen? One, the, our foundation, as I told you, we don't give much importance to sports. And wherever importance is that uh, good players are there, we don't provide the good ecosystem. Because a sports uh, player, she, she or he has to focus on sports only. All other things, like infrastructure, like uh, funds, arrangement of funds, sponsorship, the uh, issues regarding uh, like a visa or uh, training facilities, all these should be taken care of by others in the ecosystem, which doesn't happen. Whereas in the players in international and all, they need to focus only on sports. Their mental uh, 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 abilities, everything, there are psychologists to take care of them. So all these things here, the player or sports man or woman has to run after everything. It's changing in India, but then what I learned is, is that if India has to win sports medal, the ecosystem should encourage it. And also at the local self-government level, like municipalities, panjayat and all, we should give a lot of importance to sports. We should try to improve the infrastructure at the local uh, level. Otherwise, we are telling people you take interest in sports, but where, where they will go? Even for jogging, there is no place in like many places, uh, cities, there are no good places for jogging. I went to Japan. I was there for four years. What I found that the entire ecosystem encourages sports. And I found that even uh, men, women, 60, 70, 80, 90 year old, all are taking care of their body. They are doing cycling. They are doing swimming. They are doing jogging. Like whatever is possible to take care of the body, they are doing. That is because from the Childhood onward, onwards, they are seeing role models around them. 
and the ecosystem, the government, the local government, all are promoting sports. Wherever you go, you find proper jogging grounds, proper playing grounds, latest infrastructure, etc. Here, I would tell that SBA Foundation recently we supported Abhinav Bindra Foundation because they are having STEM scholarship in Pune and Bangalore. That is latest techniques which are available for uh, sportsmen in Europe and America. All these have been like uh, focused in these academies uh, in Pune and Bangalore, and these have been brought to India by Abhinav Bindra. Excellent facilities. You are like every sportsman's trades, uh, gait, the way of walking, muscle, everything is measured digitally. And they're also telling what are, what are the drawbacks you are having, how your strength can be improved. All these are being suggested. So this I am telling because unless our players are exposed to latest uh, in the sports and uh, the academy which Abhinavidra has started is something uh, which uh, like can create, can uh, generate a lot of uh, international level sportsmen. I stop here. I only tell that we can uh, like uh, improve sports in in India. One awareness of the benefits of sports have to go, and this has to come from parents, uh, teachers, principals, college administration, everything. Only then this can happen. And uh, second is conducive environment by the government, government wherever at the center or state or local level, etc. And all of us should believe that. Sports should not be equated with winning medals. Even if we don't win various medals in competitions, we should be happy if India is having a fit population. It's about physical literacy. We have focused on literacy, education literacy, digital literacy. Now we have to focus on physical literacy. Are we able to move our legs and hands? Are we able to do dancing? So at least five minutes, 10 minutes, if you can do dancing, if you can do jogging, if you can do walking, we should be very happy that we are generating a fit population. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nixon, Joseph. Actually, you have uh, been very uh, inspiring. And also SBI, we are uh, glad to hear about SBI uh, promoting a lot of uh, what we call high-tech initiatives in sports, which uh, we never used to do. So it actually, uh, it's a very inspiring a talk from you and in fact your life is also uh, inspiring for us because you took to sports at a very uh, what do you call late uh, age uh, comparatively speaking so it's nice to hear from you and we'll get back to you also so we'll quickly go to the uh, dr kishore uh, he's uh, the principal of uh, sai lncp in trivandrum and he holds a, a doctorate in uh, physical education and uh, has been associated with Sai for a very, very long time. And uh, he was the additional director in the uh, youth and sports affairs in Kerala. Uh, so we would like to uh, know from you uh, what exactly is Sai doing now to promote uh, sports and uh, fitness in the country and especially through Fit India. Uh, Thank you. So at the very outset, I would like to place on record our sincere appreciation to 70th Rajagiri Roundtable for having selected the topic fitness challenge for the nation. This is a very, very vital topic, very important at this point of time, especially when we are facing this pandemic. And uh, also at the point of time when the, we are facing a lot of threats uh, due to no, non-communicable diseases. Uh, the WHO has predicted that the 30% of Indian population will be affected by uh, uh, this type of non-communicable accident lifestyle disease, hypokinetic lifestyle diseases. So uh, in this perspective, as well as in the perspective of the COVID uh, threat posed by COVID-19, uh, it is Im imperative that uh, organizations like Radkari Roundtable takes up this type of uh, discussions and deliberate on the topic of fitness and the challenge uh, to the nation which is being posed. So uh, I would like to, I am appearing on behalf of Ministry of Sports Fit India mission. So I would like to present before you, if permitted, a standard presentation of Fit India mission. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. and uh, which will uh, what we are doing and what is the focus on and highlighting its importance. So I, if I have uh, given the, I can share the screen. Yes, I'll yes, go yes, into yes. my presentation. Yes. So is this uh, Fit India mission was uh, launched by the Honorable Prime Minister uh, in 29th August, that is the National Sports Day in the year 2019. 
So the, as rightly mentioned here by uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. J. Jacob, sports medicine, uh, and uh, Mr. Nixon Joseph, the, it is it is important that we aspire and look forward for a healthy uh, individual, healthy family, and healthy society, uh, which is essential for making the India new India and fit India. Uh, this is uh, for that various initiatives are made. What is important now is to change your lifestyle and make fitness a daily routine. That is what our honorable Priyam has appealed. And uh, uh, that will, what is even now called by uh, Mr. J Nixon, Joseph has mentioned about physical literacy. And that too is with the same uh, intention that we need to make a, you know, 10 percent literate, 100 percent literate, physically literate nation. And for that, it is each, each and every individual, each and every youth is required to make fitness a daily routine. And that is what the Honorable PM has appealed. And the whole focus and target of Fit India mission is to make the make each and every one a healthy individual and makes inter alia a healthy family and healthy society. Next, please. So this is got you know a vital pro the Fit India movement uh, it has got this uh, in uh, this objective in mind. And it is not only we are looking into the reflection of uh, to see the medals in various international competitions, but it, it is uh, the Fit India movement should become a national goal and its aspiration. This is what the Honorable Prime Minister has mentioned. And if an effort, uh, it is an effort uh, to inspire the nation. And the Prime Minister said that the Fit India nation may have started uh, by the government, but it is the people who have made, to lead it and make it success. Unless there is involvement, it needs a sea change. We need to make a remark, uh, we make a uh, change in our thought process. We need to change our perceptions uh, about physical activity and health. So uh, that is what is required at this point. And the total uh, outlook of Fit India mission is uh, in, uh, with this perspective. Next, please. And physical fitness, it is rightly mentioned here, is a state of health of well-being. And more specifically, the ability to perform aspects of sports, occupation, and daily physical activities, and which is generally achieved through proper nutrition, moderate, vigorous physical exercise, and sufficient rest. So it's very important. I need not to reiterate its importance for uh, everyone. Uh, it is quite uh, proved, and everyone knows that you know, through physical activity, promotes strong muscles, bones, improves respiratory, cardiovascular health, overall health, staying active healthy weight, weight loss risk. These are all standard things. I, this is a very learned audience. I need not to reiterate on it. Next, please. So this is what it is. You know, we need to do exercise in a regular basis. It should be a 365 days affair and not only exercise, but it is uh, also depending on the environment where you do it. It's a healthy environment, healthy diet and the workout. This together makes your health uh, healthy and fit, uh, uh, fit mentally as well as physically. Both. So this is the prediction of WHO uh, that, you know, 61% uh, of all deaths in India are due to non-communicable diseases and including lifestyle diseases. And obesity has tripled uh, for, uh, you know, from 1970s onwards. 70% of the city people are overweight. One third of Indians are going to be diabetic by 2030. 70% of the Indians do not exercise regularly and 62% do not monitor their diet. This is the facts and uh, this is not only in the case of uh, uh, the high income group, but also in the case, you know, this sort of a wrong notion where they interpret sedentary lifestyle to luxury has uh, crept into and uh, this has led to this cycle like of increase uh, uh, in the statistics, which is very, quite alarming, which is being predicted by even the premier, world's premier health organization that is WHO, next please. So the fitness aspects, if you want to look into, you have to see active lifestyle and eating habits. We need to have mental well-being as well as we we'll need to look into the preventive health care and with a sustainable environment and friendly and physical well-being. All these aspects are most important. And once only we coordinate, uh, we look into each and every with the due care, then we can uh, uh, have fitness. Next, please. Video. Can you play the video? The first one. This solution by you. Can we see this presentation uh, which will throw light on, on uh, this speaking <laughs> Fit ho yaha dekho rules are 
खेलो इंडिया ऐप के साथ आप भी ढूंढ सकते हैं अगले चैंपियंस तो कोई फोन न रह जाए जिसमें ये ऐप ना हो ताकि कोई चैंपियंस ना रह जाए जो डिस्कवर ना हो खेलो इंडिया ऐप चलो चैंपियंस ढूंढ फिजिकल एक्टिविटी एंड स्पोर्ट एस वे ऑफ लाइफ एंड हियर वी वॉन्ट टू एरेज द मिसकनसेप्शन विच इज प्रिवेलेंट एम सोसाइटी that physical participating in sports and activity will make you intellectually or maybe uh, uh, in, uh, educationally uh, backward or this is in the uh, proverb of in hindi that padoge likhoge benenge nawab khelonge kudoge benenge kharab this is a typical uh, hindi slogan where uh, which was wrong now they have made it into changed it into padoge likhoge belonge la jama so we have a series of exercises one can follow in india that it need not to be uh, into the you know uh, the disciplines the olympic disciplines we got various uh, traditional our own uh, martial arts traditional sports events uh, we have uh, we can go for uh, cycling we can go for dances we can go for uh, uh, any other form of physical where movement is involved but it should be a 365 days of there every day we should so there you know the fit age for the uh, fitness is that you have to look into one is the home every home you must uh, have uh, a, a create an environment where the child children the family uh, uh, learn they also cherish uh, good habits where fitness is promoted encouraged because in the home only the habits are formed normally the parents desist or uh, don't encourage the children to do exercises or in many of the cases now it's different and the schools doesn't have time most of the time to uh, part, take part in schools now the new education policy has made sports a part of uh, physical education a part of curriculum now the organization various organizations we are like you know the sbi or all the organizations need to be pro friendly with sports friendly with fitness and need to take on under some activity or the other uh, towards this uh, corporate social responsibility and even after retirement uh, one should lead an active life so we have the three ingredients in fit india the fit body fit mind and fit environment learning to live for the fit body learning to empower in mind and learning to live with harmony in a fit environment so these are all some of the definitions and thoughts of uh, uh, in education and uh, this all pro light on to fitness and health in fact uh, this all taken out from the ancient times uh, to the traditional indian wisdom all of them reveal that education uh, should be a, a combination of both sound body mind and spirit so even what is said by the icons of education uh, that is uh, uh, mahatma gandhi our father of nation that he has mentioned that it is the results in all round development of the best in the child's body mind and spirit so what, normally we don't conceive this uh, physic uh, the body and spirit and we can't totally focus in education into the mental aspects and uh, devoid of uh, the body and spirit that has uh, led to lot of severe consequences though that is not the actual focus and uh, the meaning of education and even swami vivekananda ji has mentioned that you will be nearer to heaven through football than through the study of gita that is swami vivekananda ji's uh, version which has been well uh, where he has uh, also given lot of importance to yoga and uh, we gives due regards how one should exercise and participate in sport and games
so this uh, going back to the fitness fit india movement this is launched by the honorable prime minister on 29 to encourage citizen to include 30 to 60 minute physical activity in their daily life okay simplicity and doing thing of doing things which makes us fit even a walking a, a, a walking from your office to your doorstep nowadays people enjoy car to carpet lifestyle but that is in fact it's not a luxury rather it's a unhealthy habit so it is said that we have to showcase ease and simplicity of doing things which makes us more fit and we have many initiatives uh, which have been taken up by the fit india uh, that is fit india blog run where 30 lakh participation was there from 43 uh, 1000 locations even it, it was originated from cochin we we had the fit india cyclothon first edition where 35 lakhs participants were there in 16000 locations and uh, we have freedom run where seven crore participation with social media to reach over 35 crores so also various virtual activities were taken up by the fit india mission thematic campaign where 20 crores were the overall reach online fitness uh, session for schools school children and families 15 lakh views on uh, international yoga day it is coming soon on 21st promotion of indigenous games that is a separate one and fit india talks were organized under the aegis of uh, fit india mission next please also we have the fit india schools uh week which uh, in which 4 lakh 30617 schools participated and uh, there were certification of 2.3 lakh schools uh, fit india school uh, were with a rating of 3 star and 5 star were given the slogan here was let students play for one period every day and every teacher to be physically fit it's not only the physical education teacher but we look forward that every teacher to be a role model to the student should be physically fit also we have fit india youth clubs there are 47600 youth clubs registered the entire details about registering for youth clubs and institutions are available in the website of fit india and we had fit india dialogues by the honorable pm himself with the icons like virat kohli milan soman and many others to inspire the youth of the country they inspire the citizens and uh, honorable sports minister sri kiran rijiju ji also had uh, dialogues with uh, many of the sports icons of the country so we had uh, various fit india celebrities as uh, icons we have champions 1 lakh to 1 uh, 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 to 10 lakhs social media followers in this we have fit india ambassadors uh, and uh, social media followers this is uh, very popular now next please also fit india app has been to be will be launched soon uh, according to very scientifically designed Uh, fit India app uh, as per age appropriate fitness fitness protocol, and uh, the it, uh, it will suggest the ways to improve health and fitness, and uh, uh, also as an activity tracker, it will also find out the calorie count of food intake and other features. So here is a small version of the on the honourable our honourable prime minister is speaking about fitness. That that we have played. रोज This was an appeal made by the honorable prime minister to make every citizen at least devote 30 minutes every day to participate in health and uh, build a fit india next please next. Next. okay so, so thank, thank you so uh, much this is in yes. short about uh, what is we are on and uh, we will be you know the fit india website will throw light and give you all details about the various uh, programs uh, and various schemes various initiatives and wherever uh, you know various uh, non government organizations uh, youth clubs sports clubs yes, uh, educational institutions can all become a part of it thank you once again i thank uh, the 70th uh, rajgiri round table to have taken up the theme of fitness challenge for the nation and i am sure that the participation of eminent experts and their further initiatives will further help to disseminate this uh, 
idea and the wisdom of making India fit and strong and aspiring to looking to see that we are a 10% not only literate country, but also a physically literate country. Too. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Mr. Nixon Joseph uh, talked about uh, the fitness or physical activity that is required for all age groups, whether it is um, a small kid or uh, whether it is a parent or whether it is a grandfather uh, of 80 years, they actually need to be very active and uh, fit because uh, as uh, already told by Dr. Kishore and other speakers that uh, the incidence of non-communicable diseases increasing like anything, like we have become the diabetes capital, we are becoming the uh, heart, uh, capital of for heart ailments, so all sort of non-communicable diseases. So I think uh, uh, spreading this culture of uh, what you call fitness in families, uh, this was a challenge which uh, many of the uh, new breed of uh, fitness experts uh, which came maybe in for last five, seven years time. Uh, so a lot of new dance fitness came. Uh, it was, uh, uh, one of them is uh, Zumba and the other is aerobics. And uh, so many, and... So that is a session led by Seema Subodh. Uh, she's actually one of the uh, Reebok certified trainers in aerobics. And right now she's in Bahrain. And she was in Kerala for a very long time uh, teaching uh, parents and even, uh, what do you call it, uh, all age groups of uh, women and uh, men and uh, getting them into fitness. Uh, and the most important thing about aerobics or Zumba or any other kind of new generation fitness programs is the music and dance. Uh, so let's hear from... Uh, 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 Seema Subodh, how this uh, concert, how she got into and her story is also inspiring and how she got into this and very quickly uh, how this can become part of the routine, how aerobics can be even become part of the school and college uh, learning at homes. Uh, so how best we can implement this. Hello everybody. Thank you first of all. Uh, what I would like to say is that for kids, for school, uh, just like in any other field, the uh, kids' interest varies. Even in uh, physical education, we have a lot of variety of exercises. So interest varies from person to person. So just like uh, how do you introduce all the subjects, you can introduce all kinds of physical activities. And uh, they can choose the one they like. Because uh, some kids, they like more speed work. Uh, some are good with flexibility. Uh, an integrated program should be there, but uh, mainly the focus should be on what their interest is. Second thing is, uh, what I would like to say is motivation. Motivation is a greater fact, even for adults as well as kids. So, uh, motivation uh, in the sense, they should be judged or uh, they should be evaluated uh, against themselves, not uh, comparing to any, any other kids, but their progress, like how they, well their aerobic capacity has increased over the time, how well their flexibility has increased over the time. Um, in such a way, they need to be evaluated. And also they can be rewarded. Uh, reward need, need not be a big thing. So, uh, it can be anything that helps them with their sport. Like uh, it can be a t-shirt, a dry fit t-shirt after uh, achieving a part particular target. And ta target can be, again, for example, if you, um, uh, I'm, I'm a runner, uh, so I would say that if a child uh, runs, like uh, in a week, suppose you give him, in a week, five kilometers, that is not a big deal for him. Anyone can do it. So uh, if that target is achieved uh, over a period of one month, uh, five into, four weeks, such a target is achieved uh, over a period of one year, you can reward him something. So that is one thing that uh, will motivate kids. Then uh, uh, everything is like uh, in sports, it is uh, mainly trial and error method. Uh, there are contraindicated exercises. Uh, some people won't be able to do or may not enjoy doing a particular kind of exercises. That's why we have yoga, we have aerobics, we have strength training. And uh, for me, I'm right now more into strength training. Um, 
so uh, the programs should be integrated because strength uh, meanwhile when the kid develops uh, the kid learns that uh, how much uh, better a person he has become and how much he has failed in achieving something and then he found out his own right way of doing things and how he achieved it so uh, this will help him in all aspects of his life so even if he fail in academics he knows that okay there is time i have to gone uh, wrong somewhere so i have to work on it uh, physical training uh, well, is basically a trial and error method uh, so if, um, if for example when you are into running you run and uh, you uh, do a 10 km run and you find yourself taking more time than others or uh, you are taking uh, like uh, so when you started you took 1 hour 10 minutes to complete the run after 2 3 weeks you are taking the same time to complete the run there is no improvement then you look into yourself and then you feel that you have to work on your strength so you go for strength training okay then uh, you might uh, procure injuries in between so then you find that okay just because lack of flexibility that i am getting my injuries so you try to be more flexible you do your stretches uh, so this is a trial and error method and this helps in all aspects of kids life so he know he has failed in things and he how he overcome that in the same way in academics also the child get to know that we have time to look into things to learn things to do it in a better way so i think uh, that is one way of uh, how you can uh, build things for kids great uh, so it's a very inspiring two or three points you raised one is that it's only through trial and error method that um, we can uh, implement any kind of physical training activity in schools and colleges and other thing is that uh, you need to, uh, to focus on where is your weakness so if there is a problem with your strength you need to do strength training so those are very important points and i think you'll stay with us for some more time when we discuss the final uh, challenges how we can overcome this in the uh, sure, school sure, sir. thank you so um, we'll quickly go to arun nair uh, um, who is part of the sport hood which has uh, got um, uh, what do you call uh, a couple of training programs for football and uh, cricket and uh, and they are in multiple locations in uh, south india uh, so we would like to know from arun nair that um, how best are the uh, private academies uh, so many private academies have now come up uh, how uh, you have uh, uh, what uh, gaps you are filling because now we have the government infrastructure we have schools and colleges which lack the kind of um, uh, a, what do you call uh, an environment ecosystem to promote sports so which is the gap that you are trying to fill and how best you are doing that yeah yeah thanks shrikumar for uh, inviting me uh, i am arun and i am founder of an organization called sporthood right uh, uh, more than uh, even though shrikumar talked about the academy part we, we try to uh, be more of a sports solution for community in the neighborhood that that's a whole uh, you know uh, basis of the name itself uh, sporthood sports in your neighborhood so this is where we are trying to cover the families need for sporting activity kids need for sporting activity and uh, you know working adults need for sporting activity uh, multiple people have already mentioned uh, that the sporting culture is what we need to develop but how are we going to develop the sporting culture because i don't think it is uh, it needs a huge brain wave for us to realize that we need a culture of sport right i mean uh, the answer is there but how do we get there uh schools obviously uh, left to themselves doesn't have the infrastructure so what sporthood tries to solve is create the accessibility into easy sporting activity for everyone the schools ideally is the best place but most of the time we know the reality is uh, in, uh, far away from that right so what we do is create a network of sporting centers where kids their parents and young adults who are working or not working can be active at a very affordable way this is modeled around uh, the australian model where where uh, 600 plus centers across australia is run by ymca in australia it's more of a ppp kind of partnership in australia uh, where a typical annual footfalls is more than the entire population of australia uh, uh, australian population is slightly less than kerala's population 
and they get footfalls annual footfalls more than uh, the entire population so that is what is true community sport activities so here i want to make the distinction between uh, some of the problems uh, you know i think trisha mentioned the uh, and uh, tinu also mentioned about the problems faced by professional athletes right but professional athletes is one in a million literally you know you get only one in a million to be a real true professional star but what about the all you know 1 million minus 1 people right I mean these are the people who should be actually picking up activity as part of their life and this is not an roi based solution we as a culture are very uh, predisposed to roi based that's why we like maths and not you know painting because painting probably is not going to give us anything but math probably will give us an iit admission or iim admission or what not right so uh, it is simply not going to work on its own right unless we give some catalyst and i believe having a good infrastructure and a good training structure close to your home easily accessible easily affordable is going to be a good catalyst it's not going to be the solution in itself right and uh, we fundamentally run on a fully self sustainable model it, it's not funded it's not uh, csr or anything right i mean it's basically pays for itself and it also enables all these private centers in fact our solutions can work with any government centers also it is uh, i mean we have created a uh, completely a self working solution in terms of how coaches can be enabled to train a bunch of people you know probably 100 150 kids in a center 100 150 kids, adults in a center i mean that's more than enough for the center to self sustain and this is easily doable with our solution but right now we are working with the private centers which because it is easy to work with private centers than than government centers it will be the the red tapes and processes are much much simpler so this is uh, in that sense i believe you know we are kind of part of the solution not the whole of the solution but part of the solution but the key here from our understanding is uh, physical education uh, on its own because it's a good thing is not going to happen it's going to happen if we are giving it the sub right kind of trigger or right kind of push and having the right kind of it need not be the world class infrastructure it just need to be the right kind of infrastructure at the right place at the right price is going to make a big difference and and multiple countries not only australia netherlands has a fantastic model uh, and eventually this is going to provide uh, you know the professional athletes also but, but that is not where we are focusing on we are focusing on can we get more and more people to be active and once they are active they are healthy for their whole life and that that is the whole uh, idea where uh, uh, we are following uh, uh, right so uh, while we are doing this with kids and their families and other adults in their life what is happening is there is a self supporting ecosystem so when when a parent is going out to play he or she is much more likely to send their kid for some kind of training it may not be the same sport but they are already kind of we talked about the you know sporting literacy or you know fitness literacy part right what is fitness literacy it is understanding that there is more to fitness than you know building body or you know running 100 meters or something right so once an adult is participating in that they understand that there is a lot more to gain by sending my kid or my niece or nephew into this system uh, than just you know whatever marks or admissions that we are going to get in the next couple of years or you know five years uh, whatever is in the short term so this realization also helps us uh, position our product where it is not only for kids not only for school going kids but also for their parents and the adults in the community that, that, so that's that's right uh, arun nair actually i got the message uh, that is uh, you are into community based uh, uh, what do you call promotion of sports you because you have uh, the facility in the neighborhood and you want all the uh, parents and also children to take part in it not necessarily with a professional um, uh, what do you call a goal or aim but still play, uh, for the joy of uh, playing and also no, achieving because something because that's like cycling once you pick it up it's with yes, you for yes. life you know you are yes. simply not going to learn not to cycle when when yeah. you are 20 right if yes. you know how to play football you will play at some point if you don't know i you think are uh, you are answering uh, tinu yohannan's um, uh, key message also that Uh, you should play just for the uh, sake of playing like uh, enjoying uh, the sport rather than thinking of achieving medals or 
any trophies. So that's a great message. And actually, you're filling a major gap uh, of people who want to play but still don't want to make it as a professional uh, uh, vocation. Okay, that's great. So we'll quickly go to R. Nagaraj, tennis coach um, in Mysore. Uh, he is also a former tennis player and now a tennis coach. And uh, we'll quickly get his views on uh, the problems that we are, we are now facing, how best we can uh, solve uh, with respect to funding and um, uh, adequate coaching infrastructure and also getting medals uh, in the I mean, uh, international level, achieving high ranking. Good evening, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, actually, uh, I run an academy in Mysore because uh, I born and brought up in Mysore and then I was uh, having a difficulty in getting a membership in Mysore Tennis Club, the only club where we have tennis. Uh, that time, like uh, it was closed because it was overcrowded. We had that time only three tennis courts in the club and uh, temporarily closed for the members to become part of that. So somehow I got into that and then I had very difficulty in uh, bringing up myself. Uh, there was no coach in that time in Mysore. I used to do wall practice and then I used to uh, break around two to three balls every day and borrow some balls from the club and then buy some second hand balls again, do wall practice uh, two to three hours every day and then improve myself. And I became a state player and also I started late when I was 21 years old. Straight away, I played men's category in the circuit. And uh, I achieved quite a bit as a late starter. Uh, I became top 10 in the country in the men's level in 90 to 94. Later on, uh, I thought like, uh, why can't I give back something to the sports where I find it difficult to play so let's help uh, other children not to disappoint themselves without playing. So that is the reason I started my tennis center in Mysore. And uh, nowadays, uh, uh, winning a medal for the country is not that easy because uh, we, as a lot of speakers already told, it's a business now. The people are started investing in sports because they are getting back by investing whether it is uh, for their own children or whether it is as a business, whether it is starting a sports institution, uh, by which otherwise they can start academies, not only tennis, any other sports academies, badminton. Uh, you don't believe after Sindhu and uh, Naina when, won the medal for India, in Mysore itself, we have around 30 indoor shuttle courts with uh, five to six courts in each center. And we have about, uh, till now, we have only about uh, 50 tennis courts in Mysore. Imagine the amount of uh, money and uh, the name they got in the badminton for themselves. So now everybody knows that uh, there is a money in sports. And uh, there are a lot of uh, children who are gone to America under sports scholarship because they have achieved good in the junior level. The American universities uh, welcomes uh, the players who are ranked in the junior. They'll take care of their uh, courses totally free of cost if they're ranked in juniors. So like that, even the government is giving a lot of sports quota in uh, income tax department, central exercise, customs, and railways, and uh, even petroleum uh, companies, they're encouraging them. So basically, it is not that uh, uh, bad idea to continue a sports. Uh, it is up to the parents to decide whether we have to take them only for the engineer or medical, or can we take them as a sportsman? Not necessary, they have to bring the medal to the country. They can stand on their own with uh, a good uh, name and fame for themselves as a coach or as a player, or as a mentor, there are a lot of opportunities now. Even in the uh, business-wise, uh, there are a lot of uh, sports management colleges coming up, which are very healthy for the sports persons to uh, continue in the same category. Like uh, somebody said, uh, after 9th, 10th uh, standard, they used to stop for the studies. 
now that is not happening uh, much because they have the opportunities in the sports line itself to continue not only as a sports person uh, as a entrepreneur in the sports they can continue and uh, coming back to winning a medal for the country uh, which is uh, a based on uh, not only a private academy it also involves lot of other things like uh, funding from the government to help uh, uh, children to go abroad and play tournaments uh, get a particular kind of uh, training uh, for themselves uh, if i come to know that uh, a person has to improve uh, our fitness uh, i'll try my best to find somebody in mysore find somebody in bangalore find somebody in india if that is not working out i have to tell them to go abroad where there have uh, uh, a particular fitness trainer who trains only uh, tennis training so that is the thing uh, we need to know that uh, we require so much uh, uh, particular uh, training for a particular student uh, which not comes easy which is not that easy to go so and spend your money on your own the boarding lodging and the coaching fees will be very expensive and staying there abroad in european countries is not that easy so this is this this kind of funding we required from the government whether it is from the uh, state government or whether it is from our association or from the central government they need to identify these kind of uh, things and uh, presently uh, yes government is doing something for the uh, high level of uh, sports persons who are already achieved something in in, in their category they are training them for the olympics uh, to get the medal this should come with a grassroots level where they have uh, a state government tie up with a talent search or something like uh, where uh, uh, conduct all all sports like kelo india and then select top 1 and 2 in in each uh, state and train them where they are wherever they are training and support them with the infrastructure proper infrastructure and equipments to be used in the advanced level that will definitely help uh, in coming days and basically it is not uh, a government alone can do it it is basically a parents interest if the parent is have the interest to um, continue with their children's uh, performance level of the sports parents can do lot by encouraging children to take up the sports activity thank you sir yes uh, that's great uh, nagraj you have said in fact very many points one is the fitness required for the sport uh, as such and also providing the right kind of infrastructure in a decentralized manner rather than uh, the need to go abroad uh, for that kind of training so that is a critical issue that we need to address uh, so uh we have covered so many issues now uh, the important thing here is that um the uh, uh what do you call that spirit of uh, uh, sports or uh, fitness that need to be uh, uh, what do you call started at the home itself now when there is a, a system where uh, the parent itself encourages that is what um, we uh, it's the crux of the discussion the parents have a very vital role to play uh, in that uh, aspect nutrition plays a big role in fact the 69th uh, rajagiri round table was about nutrition uh, how the junk food uh, and uh, fast foods were destroying our uh, health and uh, causing so much problems uh, that is also a part of the reason why uh, we have uh, so much non communicable diseases uh, so the pallikudam uh, which is the, the brand uh, which the rajagiri media uh, uh, has uh, has come out with uh, various initiatives uh, like teach india then taste india which i just talked about and then uh, train india which is about uh, the sports and fitness uh, so we'll have dr um, vargis pandalu karan who is the director of rajagiri media to quickly uh, guide us about um, and tell us about how this program is going to be uh, run in a very innovative manner and uh, we'll just hear from him before we go into the final discussion oh uh, i uh, just imagine that these things should go together you know teaching training and uh, the tasting uh, these three aspects uh, many have already pointed out uh, that the, the 
they need not be isolated you know uh, the teaching should be complemented with the training training should be also complemented with the uh, right food so health fitness and so that is what we plan for uh, the next uh, years to come uh, it is very much aligned with the national goals in education in fitness and in also in uh, right food uh, these projects i, I imagine sigmar should have already said about all these the uh, three uh, projects uh, we uh, want a comprehensive solution uh, we develop a online uh, initiative online school which is called pallikuram high school and it's a online uh, platform which will be complementing the initiatives of the government and all other uh, participants here uh, put uh, in a simple way uh, introduce these three uh, areas to the uh, to the people or the country uh, to the remotest corner of india uh, so this is a these are all designed as uh, uh, projects which will be uh, submitted to right organizations and it should be also uh, in the long run helping india to remain uh, the, this particular education system we want to introduce is a kind of entrepreneurial education system there's something very modern very new uh, as pointed out by uh, the speakers you know uh, we have a problem of redundant learning you know the learning becomes redundant these days because many of the skills which students get in school not be useful for them to remain in the uh, right uh, career space in the future so therefore that aspect has to be taken into account and it is a, taken into account through this uh, entrepreneurial uh, orientation of learning and together with that these three two aspects fitness as well as right nutrition healthy eating so this could be a combined program which could be uh, creating a kind of culture of Uh, right learning, right eating, and right uh, training, right fitness. So that is the uh, final goal of uh, of the Rajpi Media Social Initiative. Okay. Uh, thank you, Dr. Vadis Pandalu Karan. Uh, so we'll quickly um, uh, we have now reached the uh, end of the program, but we'll quickly get uh, views from a uh, couple of experts uh, regarding uh, key issues that were raised in the. beginning of the uh, uh, program that is one is that everything has to start from either home or school uh, we'll quickly go to seema because uh, she also raised some important issues um, regarding how to uh, implement this the we all also uh, we have to look into when so many programs are there we need to look into which suits the uh, child better and also their interest so how best can this um, uh, training programs be implemented in school what is uh, what should be the hours devoted or uh, what is the uh, structure required uh, sir i think uh... hours is uh, per day it can be one and a half hours uh, for physical activity including sports okay. yeah of course sports because uh, if it is this one hour it will be for a name say uh, um, i mean you need some time for warm up then that particular activity at least uh, like uh, 45 minutes for that particular activity Uh, whichever you focus on and then you go to stretch uh, and finish it uh, finish the program that should be uh, the way even when you go out for a walk you warm up then you do strength uh, some strength basic strengthening and then you come down cool down same way uh, it has to be for kids if it's one hour uh, i don't think it, it is even a general program should stand for like one and a half hour yeah uh, Shri Kumar, did you ask me a question because I yes, had some yes. network connectivity? So ah, can yes. Can you speak to that? Yeah, the main issue is that uh, the schools are not giving proper um, uh, emphasis for uh, physical education in the present system. 
but of course uh, you know a lot of new initiatives have been uh, announced by the sports ministry and sai has already made a presentation on fit india and how uh, fit india schools have been started and uh, uh, so um, basically uh, how to address the immediately what are the priority areas uh, for schools in general because there may be lot of schools which are not focused on the physical training aspect of uh, education yeah yeah uh, see uh, the way we see it is schools are uh, you know fundamentally best place if, i mean in fact even better place than neighborhood sports centers because kids are already there and and schools have a lot of leverage on what actually kids can do and uh, like seema said but it needs a structure that is uh, what is typically lacking i mean when i was studying in a school and Uh, see most of the time the way schools think even schools who are focused on sports think is you know we want to uh, create a performance uh, or performing team of sports people so if there is a football team cricket team basketball team what happens is a, uh, extraordinary proportion of time and effort goes into these teams which represent the schools which are usually uh, a tiny fraction of the whole population right i mean uh, in a school of 3000 kids uh, you know maybe 15 kids are there in the basketball team but is does only those 15 kids need it and obviously those 15 kids are going to get fantastic training right but what is uh, going to be the training schedule or pattern for remaining right uh, and obviously they are not going to represent the school anywhere but if we put a basic structure and a curriculum right we have a curriculum for math we have a curriculum for english do we have a curriculum for pe or sport i mean we we are yeah, we, we look at it with a disdain if somebody says okay you know you need a curriculum for sports what is there is a curriculum you know you can go out and play there is a field right no, obviously you can learn maths also that way right and uh, then but why don't we do this right because of the focus It, it it's not that it requires you know crores of expenditure it just requires the right kind of material to be given to the pe teachers and right kind of time to be given to them so chemistry teacher don't hijack the pe class so if we save that right and give the basic curriculum right like seema said curriculum will take care of this kind of things you know make sure that it's not a 45 minutes pe period where 15 minutes is spent on transportation this is basically not helping anybody right but if it is a one and a half hour session with proper warm up cool down and stretching yes it does help right and it might actually develop players also so two things from my point of view a curriculum and basic training and sufficient time i am not even going into the infrastructure because once we talk about infrastructure everybody says okay we don't have the money right i'm saying if you have the ground right training and the curriculum and structure is going to make a difference first level difference obviously having infrastructure is going to have a bigger impact right but it is a uh, tougher sell or you know tougher kind of change because a lot of money needs to go into that schools have to prioritize the money but with zero money added into the system or or negligible amount of money added into the system we can make this curriculum and the structure happen right and provide sufficient time it will have a big impact because Uh, the neighborhood centers like what we are doing um, can only supplement what schools are doing or i mean at this point we are somehow replacing what sk- schools should be doing uh, giving giving kids uh, enough uh, sporting time right uh, so obviously uh, you know there is a space for private academies neighborhood centers and uh, schools with the right curriculum and right partnerships right in 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 terms of structure is that is what is going to make the difference at least in, uh, that is a low hanging fruit in my point of view uh, okay. a lot of people can contribute there uh, but if we can get people to contribute the this right kind of material on that and not get hung up on infrastructure which is the costly piece then we can uh, definitely yeah. make a huge difference just yeah, this is the precisely the question that uh, i was asking from the beginning also that uh, what is the structure of physical education what is this what should be go into the physical education so i think that where we don't still have any clarity i thought premananda will be able to tell us in some detail but so we'll quickly go to trisha uh, we know the for her views after hearing Uh, the government view and also all the coaches view what uh, she feels about uh, tennis and other sport training in india yeah i just uh, wanted to add one more thing on this physical education 
uh, what I want to say is there are a lot of students or you know uh, students who are going to school who are weak in academics or um, just because they're weak in academics uh, doesn't mean you know they might not be good in sports because many of them say you know you shouldn't be playing sports and all that you know which was for a long time. So I think that the schools should start promoting kids who are really interested in sports rather than forcing them. Uh, to get their academics done. I mean, academics is needed, but if sports is their interest, then that should be their first priority um, rather than keeping academics as their first priority. That's what I feel because that's the same thing I did because academics, like open schooling, there's a lot of things, you know, you can do side by side and then get your academics also done. But if they're really interested in sports and this physical education, not, I don't know, but any sort of game, you know, anything they want can be done. And uh, the other thing that I would like to add is on the physical education. Um, I think mainly in Kerala, we, as I mentioned before, we lack a lot of physical education teachers. Um, and I think now there has been a lot of uh, talks on uh, ex-players, ex-athletes. Uh, if they could take up the physical education, it would make up make a big difference. But like if if I had if I had my coach as my physical education teacher it would make a big difference in my life because he has a lot of experience. It's not only the written uh, learning that, you know, it's a lot of uh, life experience and a lot of things that come into play. So if the ex-players or ex-athletes come into this picture, there can be a lot more um, achievements or a lot more, um, you know, we could have a lot more laurels than, you know, now we don't have much. But when their experiences, when their mentoring comes into place in school, in school education, that would definitely make a big difference in my opinion. Great. Uh, so we'll quickly um, uh, go to Sumit of Amity uh, Business, uh, Amity right. School International School, and uh, also Reshma uh, before we conclude uh, the session. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, <clears throat> regarding, regarding the curriculum, what, uh, what uh, we were talking about, <clears throat> the physical education period, that time, uh, minimum uh, 40 minutes uh, uh, should be there. So, uh, because uh, for a physical activity, there, there, there should be general uh, exercise uh, uh, and then uh, uh, the students should be able to play. So, what I remember is my coach, Suresh Babu, sir, uh, uh, always says, uh, let the child play because the child should be able to play so that he develops a game as well as the endurance and fitness. Everything will come along with that. The uh, skills everything will come that uh, that should be done in physical uh, education what uh, what uh, i have seen and uh, we are still in the early stage what uh, free and exercise uh, staying in a stationary part stationary position and doing exercise will is a monetary uh, monot uh, monetary activity and so that uh, they uh, they are not uh, no uh, the child is not interested in that so the, that is what happening in the early stage but now the teacher the, everything have to change but still uh, I'm sad. Uh, the uh, still uh, in some schools uh, is, is still practicing this. So this is one of the area where we have to uh, change, innovate uh, that 40 minutes so that uh, the teacher will uh, give a systematic uh, uh, arranged and then let, let them after general exercises let them play and then the teacher will supervise and then he finds the best out of a talent that is identified there. So this is what uh, what uh, what uh, my coach uh, uh, that uh, uh, late uh, Suresh Babu Sarah already taught us. So th this is what I, I am also you know uh, after this uh, twenty years experience I am also uh, thinking about that only because the child should be able to play. Every child should learn a sport in their lifestyle. So they uh, in their life so that they will continue that sport in their life so that they can maintain uh, a fitness, health, and uh, wellness in the life so th this is what but what happens is this is uh, we were talking about so many uh, activities now i, I uh, heard but what happens is uh, this is uh, all the cities it's happening uh, 7 to 30 percent of the people is having this all of uh, new facilities but when we see to uh, in uh, india 70 percent in the village and, and uh, less facilities and we are not getting the opportunity to play so the uh, actual thing is happening is what what i was saying is 70 percent is not having this opportunity to play because they actually they need a, a, a person a supervisor a teacher a expert who is qualified 
I, I wanted to add. Uh, 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 expert was telling that uh, uh, athlete was telling that uh, uh, best uh, top athlete should be uh, sent to school. Yeah, of course he can be sent to school. Uh, it will be a great inspiration, but he should be trained, not in a simply coming out uh, as a coach. Because every every athlete cannot become a teacher or a coach because he needs an expertise. He needs to learn all the psychological, physiological, kinesiology, all the aspects in sports. Only then he be because he as a as a, a player, I can be a player uh, by training from the coach. But to teach, I have to know the all the uh, aspects of uh, the uh, teaching like uh, psychology, physiology. Uh, uh, sport medicine, everything should be uh, uh, have, have, uh, every knowledge should be there uh, for a coach. So that that is very important. So uh, uh, what I uh, 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 think I am thinking is so this is uh, what uh, all the uh, all the physical education teachers should be there in the schools. That is a basic thing. What everyone talks about high tech everything, but the the sad thing is that. Uh, no physical education teachers in the schools in in most of the schools in in our state and i, I know uh, i've been in abroad i've, I've been a teacher in uh, middle east i've been a teacher in abroad, uh, other states what even in cbse school there is no teacher physical education teacher but it should be it should be made compulsory that physical education teacher is should be a compulsory and that too uh, 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 trained uh, uh, expert not uh, uh, simply uh, a player uh, coming and uh, coming in, uh, into a school and teach. So yes, this, this yes. will yeah, not happen because is, uh, he knows uh, all the aspects. So this is what. Yeah. So, the, uh, so the, this is how. So that, uh, uh, I uh, I pray that uh, because uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I'm I'm going I'm coming to the end because uh, through physical activities we make you know nerves of steel and uh, iron body and that will uh, make the child. Uh, uh, face all the challenges okay so um, uh, we had a very interesting session um, uh, in the last two hours and uh, so many uh, issues were uh, thrown up and so we will conclude uh, this session actually um, uh, the important point raised is that uh, so much new effort has come into the uh, sports and fitness uh, in india because government has taken this as a major um, you know, what do you call priority and emphasis and in their policy making, and you can find that Fit India, Kelo India, so many uh, new initiatives have been started, and so many private academies have come up which want to promote um, uh, sports in the neighborhood. And we have uh, so many new initiatives in the new education policy, NEP 2020. Uh, so uh, overall, uh, if you say that uh, there is also an effort to bring medals uh, in the coming Olympics, we have a TOPS program. So much CSR funding is also coming into sports. These are all very positive um, sentiments being uh, coming, um, positive vibes coming across uh, the country. And uh, we wish that um, this momentum is taken forward. So many issues have to be resolved. And at the school level itself, as Judson had said, uh, we have to start off from the school level itself. And parents' attitude has to change. The attitude of the teachers have to change. Teachers have to remain fit. And uh, it's not a question of age. At whatever age we can as um, uh, Mr. Nixon Joseph has proved that at any age you can take up a sport like running or jogging or cycling or anything and still uh, add to your productivity and efficiency in your any other job that you are doing. So that's a very positive sentiment. And as um, Dr. Vargis Padalukar has already said, uh, three major initiatives have been started by Pallikudam and uh, it is called Train, uh, Teach India, uh, Taste India and Train India. And uh, you'll be coming, to, I mean, you'll be knowing more about it very soon. And we are sure that it will get the kind of support uh, from the sports fraternity. So I once again, I thank you all uh, for the being part of this session. And uh, uh, so it's indeed uh, great that uh, all of you uh, joined uh, in this and shared your thoughts. So we'll be publishing this in our next issue of Palikudam magazine and also on YouTube. Uh, so keep uh, uh, keep contact with us and uh, help us grow. Thank you. Thanks a lot.